Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve course schedule, lead code number 207. So there's a total of num courses, many courses that you have to take, and they're labeled from 0 to n minus 1. So we're given an array called prerequisites, where each prerequisites at i is basically an edge in a graph. So it's an AIBI, and that indicates you must take course BI first if you want to take course AI. So it's basically saying that B is a prerequisite for A. Before you're allowed to take A, you must have first taken B. So for example, the pair zero one indicates that to take course zero, you'd first have to take course one. Okay, so we just need to return true if you can finish all the courses and otherwise you can return false. Okay, so here's an example, num courses is two. That means that there's just two courses labeled zero and one. And we just have one edge in this graph here. To take course one, you'd have to take first zero. That's fine. Yeah, you would just take zero first and then you would take one. You can finish all the courses, so we'd return true. Uh, but in this example here, we basically have an interdependency here. This first edge says that to take course one, you'd first have to take course zero. Okay, so we have to take zero first, except this one says that, oh, but to take course zero, you'd have to take course one. So there's basically no way to do that. And so you'd have to return false there. Okay, so let's take a look at this example where num courses is equal to three. There's three many courses and your prerequisite says that to take course zero, you'd first have to take course one. And then to take course one, you'd have to first take course two. So we know we'd have three vertices. We'd have one for zero, one for one, and one for two. Let's look at the first edge here. So between zero and one, this is saying that course one is a prerequisite for course zero. In order to take zero, you'd first have to take one. So we're going to draw it like this, and that might be counterintuitive, but trust me, it works out much better this way. Okay, so to take course zero, you'd first have to take course one. That's what this edge here says, and it's a directed graph. It's specifically specifying that this course requires this course here. Okay, so that's the first edge the second edge between one and two here. So this is saying that two is a prerequisite for one. And so we would draw it the same way like this. In order to take course one, you'd first have to take course two. Now this way of drawing it makes the math work out very well because say for example, you wanted to know if you can take course zero. Well, to take course zero, you'd first have to look at its outbound edges. And so you'd first have to take course one. We don't know if we can take course one yet because one has a prerequisite. We'd have its outbound edges, which is two. Okay, great. We don't have any outbound edges here. Note that two is not trailing off to anything. So we can take two. There's no problem there. Now, if we go back here, one would say, okay, there is no problem. We had to take two. We can take two. And so we can take one. And then we'd go back here and say zero had to take one. Yep, we can do that. That's okay. And so he's a check mark as well. Since there's three different vertices and we have three different check marks, it means we can take all the courses. So we're good to go. We'd return true here. Now let's make a very slight modification to this, which is really going to mess things up. So if we had the connection to zero, specifying that to take course two, you'd first have to take course zero. Uh-oh, to take course two, you'd first have to take course zero. If you wanted to take course zero, you'd have to be able to take course one. And to take course one, you'd have to be able to take course two. But to take course two, you'd have to take course zero. That's a problem. That's an interdependency here where zero needs one, one needs two, and two needs zero. There is basically a cycle in this graph, okay? So when there is a cycle in the graph, that is basically when you'd return false. And it's really that simple is that if there's a cycle in the graph, you'd return false. And if there's no cycle in the graph, like there was a moment ago here, no cycle here, we have no interdependencies. And so you'd return true in that case. So really this problem simply bottles down to graphing it like this, where you're saying that kind of A is going to point over to node B here. And then it's just true if there's no cycles and false if there is a cycle. Okay, let's use this example here to see how we can detect cycles in a graph. Course zero requires course one, that's fine, we can do that. Course two requires course three, okay, two requires three. Course three requires four, we can do that. Three requires four, and two requires one. Zero to one, two to three, three to four, and two to one. 
So there's no cycles right here. Now each of these nodes are going to be in one of three states at any time. They could be unvisited, so we have not seen them at all. Unvisited is going to be the state of zero. They could be being visited right now, so they're kind of in our current trajectory. We'll get to that. That is going to be visiting is equal to one. So if we're currently visiting that in our path, that's one. Two is going to be fully visited. We know it's okay. We know we could take the course and we're done seeing that. We don't need to check it again. Okay, so right now they're all zeros and in the code you'd kind of implement this as an array, but right now we're just going to have it hovering over them. So they're all unvisited. Let's first take a look at the zero. When we're taking a look at it, it means it switches to visiting. So right now we're currently visiting that. So we'd basically do a depth first search from this. And so we'd go over here and say, okay, well to first take course zero, you'd have to take course one. And we'd actually kind of quickly jump that from visiting. So we're currently visiting that and then very quickly jump it to visiting visited because we've concluded that we can take that course. We're done seeing this. This is just a check mark every time. So we can confirm we can take this course and we kind of go back here and say, yeah, we found no cycles. We have no problem. And so we could take this course and basically anything down that path. So that means that zero, since it doesn't have any other neighbors here, that means that you can take this course. And so he would jump to visited. We can take that course. Great. But that doesn't give us the whole story here. We'd have to iterate over the nodes and make sure we can take all of them. If you looked at node one, again, you'd see that we're good to go there. That's fine. If you looked at node two, that's the next one in order. We're going zero, one, two, up until n minus one. So we'd have to do our search from two. Okay, so we're visiting two. So we'd switch that to a one. And then we'd go down this edge and see, yep, okay, we know this is a two. And so we know there's no problems this way. And so this direction is fine. We would take its other edge and say, oh, three. Okay, we don't know if we can take that. We're currently visiting three. And then can we take three? well we'd have to take four and so we'd switch four over to visiting and very quickly to visit it because it has no outbound edges okay so no cycles over here we would tell that to the three he's been marked as visited then confirm to the two that he could be visited as well that search actually started from this node here we would actually end up iterating over you know we would check three yes that's a two so he's good to go this guy we check as well again in the iteration and he's good to go okay so we basically went through and iterated all of the nodes and did a DFS over all of those nodes until we made sure that they were all check marks in the path. And since they are, we can finish that iteration and basically there's no cycles. So we'd return true. Okay, now let's start this over again, and I'm going to make one very slight modification to our graph here. So let's add in a cycle. A cycle would be an interesting one, would be four all the way back until two, okay? So we know that's gonna be a problem at some point. That is going to be the connection of four requires two. Okay, so we've kind of already did this part already, so I'm just gonna do it quickly again. This would be visiting. We'd go over here and say, we're visiting this and he's good, so he is visited. And this would go back to visited as well. We would actually iterate over the one, and so he's good to go. The two node, we would be starting to visit that. And then we'd go down this path. Okay, that one's fine, no cycles there. This one, okay, the three, we are visiting him. We'd go to the four and say, okay, we're visiting it. But then the four would say, oh, we are visiting this in the current path. Okay, we're in this current trajectory right now. That means that we actually just found a cycle because we hit something that we're in the path already. So because of that, we declare that we found a cycle and we'd want to escape and say that we want to return false overall. Okay, so let's code the solution up. Okay, so we're going to build the graph because we're given a list of edges here and that's not super useful. We're going to turn that into an adjacency list. That's the easiest one to work with, very efficient and easy to work with. So we'll get G, that's just what I'm calling the graph. G is equal to a default dict, which takes a list. If you haven't seen that, I'll explain that shortly. And just as a convenience factor, I'd rather call it courses than prerequisites because prerequisites, you know, I'm, I'm literally having trouble typing it right now. Okay, to build up this graph, which it's gonna to be an adjacency list. We'll do for A and B in the courses. We're just going to G at A dot append with B. Okay, so this is a dictionary. A is also connected to B. Each key is going to map to a list of all of its prerequisites, exactly the directed graph that we had before. Let's get some constants. So unvisited is equal to zero. That's that original state. We're all gonna mark them at that originally. Uh, visiting is going to be one and visited, aka we can take that course that is gonna be state two. And let's call this state. So state is going to be an array. That is, they're all gonna be unvisited 
one scene to begin with, so all zeros, that's going to be an array of num courses, many courses. So firstly, we're going to do a DFS, which takes a node, which is just going to be an integer, uh, but we're going to ignore this for now. So let's see how to use this. For i in the range of num courses, so we're going to iterate over the courses to make sure that we can take those. And our DFS is actually going to tell us if we can take that course or not. Was there a cycle anywhere in its dependencies and prerequisites path? So basically, if not DFS on i, we're going to say that the DFS returns true if everything's okay. So if this is not true, then there is a problem, aka there's a cycle. So if there was a cycle there, then we'd want to return false, meaning we can't take that course or we can't take all the courses. And otherwise, you could safely return true. This DFS will go through the paths that we can from that node and see if there's a cycle or not. And it may also change the states of some of these nodes. Okay, okay, so let's actually call this states. And then this can be the state of that node that we're currently at is equal to the states at the node. Okay, so we know its current state. If the state is visited, so if we've fully seen this already, aka we can take this course, there's no problems, then you can just return true. We know there's not going to be any problems because basically we've done this before. Okay, if it's not, well, otherwise, if state is equal to visiting, that was the one where we saw a problem. Okay, when it was in that path cycle, it was in visiting, and then we can actually return false because that is exactly what it means to have a cycle. All right, if it's not either of those two, that means it's unseen. And so we are currently visiting it. So we should change states at the node that we're currently looking at to be visiting, we need to do its neighbors. So for each neighbor in the G at the node, so take a look at this node's prerequisites. And let's go through all of them one by one. It's very simple here. If not DFS at the neighbor, you can return false. If you don't have DFS at the neighbor, aka if there's a problem over here, if there's a cycle over here, then you can return false. Okay, so we would do that for each of the neighbors. And if you do that for each of the neighbors and you never ran into an issue, we should go from visiting to visited because we're basically back here and we know there's no problem. We can take this course. So we should change states at the node equal to visited. That means that we're good to go. And also you want to return true. This tells other nodes that there was is no problem here. Okay, so that's basically our code here. Now the time complexity of this will be very standard for a graph problem like this. We're basically seeing all of the nodes. So we know that's going to be at least a big O of n, where n is the number of nodes. We're clearly taking all of the edges that we have, because for every single node that we see, we go through all of its edges. So this is going to be a big O of n plus e. Uh, and it's not going to be any worse than that, because basically, once you see a node, we are going to go through the process of seeing its edges. And we're never going to go through those edges again. Because once we do that, you actually mark it as visited. So once it's visited, this is going to be an O of one operation to see that node. So that's no problem there. We're not going to do this stuff multiple times per node. So this is an O of n plus e, where n is the number of nodes in the graph, e is the number of edges. And for the space complexity, well, we know we're getting at least a big O of n because we're doing a DFS through all of the nodes. So we could have at most n many nodes on the recursive call stack. You could picture like, a huge circle of these basically and that would be or even just like a line like this that'd be a big o of n solution uh, but the problem is that in this graph here we're actually storing the graph and so for every single edge that you have basically the length of this prerequisites array you're storing all of those edges in the graph so you have the o of n from the recursive call stack and you're also storing all of the edges on the graph as well so you're going to store both o of n plus e where n is the number of vertices in the graph and e is the number of edges in the graph. Okay, drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was and have a great day. Bye bye.